Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Cheryl McKenzie, founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. She now lives in Powell River, British Columbia. Welcome back to the show, Cheryl. Hello, Jim. Cheryl, let's talk about mental illness and pesticides. Are there connections between pesticides and mental illness? Um, well, this is an interesting thing because I sort of feel a lot of times we imagine the head being separate from the rest of the body, which is bizarre. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, we know that if you have an oxygen debt to the brain, there's brain damage. Um, but it seems like when we think about poisons, we, we don't think about um, brain damage so much. But actually, there's quite a bit of information um, linking all kinds of psychiatric disorders to um, pesticide exposure, especially certain types of pesticides. And um, the more you look at it, the more you feel it's probably... Um, impacting the general population more and more. We're just not aware of chronic exposure. It's kind of like a conversation that I had with a pediatrician a couple of years ago. Actually, we were both being interviewed, and um, it was about chlorpyrifos, which is a, an organophosphate pesticide. And this is one of the groups of pesticides that are more closely linked to um depressive disorders of different kinds, including uh, things like schizophrenia and, and so on. But um, what was interesting was that we, she was saying, you know, how, look at how long it's taken us to basically accept that tobacco is linked to both um, lung and heart disease. And yet we kind of knew this for 40 years. And, and really, if you're thinking sensibly, Imagining inhaling smoke into our lungs is going to not be a good thing, regardless. So, uh, you know, 40 years. But when you actually look at the studies uh, to substantiate these claims with tobacco and you compare them to the studies on one pesticide, chlorpyrifos in particular, there's like 2,000 peer-reviewed studies on the harm of this pesticide. And its mode of action is to inhibit acetylcholinesterase, which is a function of the nervous system. And if that's damaged, there's going to be nervous system damage, which is going to impair brain function. So it's kind of like insane to think that it wouldn't impact um, the brain if you're exposed to um, this pesticide. It's The problem is, correlating when you're exposed. And sometimes we know that there has been exposure. And before 2000, uh, in Canada, this particular pesticide was um, available for household use. And it was clear uh, from many reports that it was that it was harming children. It was causing birth defects and causing harm to people's nervous system. So back in 2000, I believe 2000, um, the health minister had all of those products pulled and you had to get a um, special permission because this is a restricted pesticide to use it. Farmers could use it. Um, the city of Edmonton was using it for mosquito control and that's how I became very aware of it. And uh, so throughout this time, it's been clear that this pesticide has not been reassessed. So we've talked about assessment before being very poor of pesticides in general in Canada in, in, in many ways. But its mode of action, it will damage the nervous system. 
So it's then it's how much you've been exposed to in your food or whether you've inhaled it or, or absorbed it through the skin or whatever. So that's where the mystery lies, knowing how much and so on. But there certainly is quite a lot of studies, and especially in regards to farm workers, agricultural workers. Um, in a 2008 study, they say that a lifetime of exposure um, makes you 55% more likely to be diagnosed with clinical depression than those with fewest application de- days, and were 80% more likely if they applied organophosphates. Um, so, it's we're just looking at one aspect. There's there's you know 7,000 pesticide products registered for use in Canada, and we've definitely been increasing them, and we're seeing all kinds of studies looking at different aspects of, of how they impact our health and how we're being exposed to them. So I would say there definitely is a link. Showing this link is complex and complicated because you have to know when you've been exposed and how much. How can people prevent the risk of mental illness from pesticides? Well, just just avoid them. Uh, don't use them and uh, lobby to your government not to use them in the municipality that you live in um, and expect that uh, your city would um, at least notify you in areas that they are using it. Sometimes the, it's you go into a park and you find out after you've been in the park or the, the area where they've sprayed that uh, there was no good signage or there wasn't any signage. So, you know, we people need to lobby their government for, for that change. And then um, eating organic foods is going to dramatically lower your exposure. Um, it's it, it, again, depends also where you get your food. I mean, if you're getting it from a local farmer who's not organic but he doesn't spray pesticides, then you're going to lower your exposure there. Um, but it's also in a number of products that sometimes people don't think about. So besides your food, um, you know, like uh, working as a massage therapist, I actually get organic lotions because I'm putting that lotion on my hands and my forearms, and I'm putting this all over somebody. And um, So you can have pesticides and other products besides food products. So you want to think about that. Um, you know, there's there's certainly um, other things in our environment besides pesticides that we want to be concerned about, other toxins, but um, they're in places we don't think about. Uh, and forestry. I mean, we're using the forestry. So if a place is not monitoring their water for pesticides, you could get it in your water. So you might want to consider uh, getting a good water filter. I think I would do that anyways now, um, just knowing how, Unfortunately, our water is not being monitored as it should be and not being protected as it should be. So these are all different ways you could lower your exposure to it. Um, even um, our clothing, <laughs> it's hard to say how much um, would be in an ordinary T-shirt, for example, as opposed to an organic cotton T-shirt. But the interesting thing about that, too, is that uh, there's evidence that organic cotton is a superior uh, fiber. So there's multiple reasons for looking at how you consume and what you consume. Um, at least that's some ideas. I hope they're helpful. Yeah, I remember uh, some members, maybe Ken Reed of the Canadian Olympic ski team was getting this horrible rash all the time and it turns out it was the harsh chemicals they were used to size the uniforms. <laughs> so he had to get yeah. something organic. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it's really interesting that, I mean, this is a, a different issue, but, you know, everybody's got hand sanitizer everywhere. Um, and how many recalls have we seen on hand sanitizer since this, this pandemic happened? I'm just like, well, why haven't they removed these hand sanitizers before the, the pandemic? So, um, you know, I'm wondering if people are having reactions to some of these hand sanitizers, and that's why they're getting pulled now. But 
How are you going to know when you're being exposed to a pesticide? Well, you really, a lot of times, aren't even going to know. I mean, um, if our city was spraying uh, a restricted pesticide, people didn't even know they were using it, but they were also spraying it in parks uh, against federal regulations. That was something nobody would have known if we hadn't done a sort of our own investigation there. So it's, it, it could make a person kind of paranoid. But uh, the point is... Um, we really do need to be putting pressure on our own uh, local governments about what they're doing because, unfortunately, nobody's really watching uh, or overseeing it like we think. And uh, and if you're not being notified, you know, I, I, I don't know how many people have contacted me and said they've seen, you know, uh, the city that they live in, they've sprayed, uh, pesticides in an area and then seeing little kids going into that same area right after it was sprayed. So those people are not even knowing and if their kids are, you know, reacting later on it, um, you know, having some kind of a respiratory problem, they're not going to even know. And I, that's the thing that has always made me a little angry is the irresponsible use and lack of, uh, consent that is actually not being put forward to people in the places that they live in. But when you look at, it's really hard to decide how much is too much or and so on because how do you know how much you're getting? I mean, so there are some studies showing, you know, where they've found glyphosate, for example, in, in, in mother's breast milk and um, found pesticides in, in tissue that uh, we didn't believe would be accumulating in the body. So it's obvious it's not leaving the body like you think it did. Uh, so you definitely want to lower your exposure. I mean, if you're just eating a lot of junk food, you're going to be getting more. Guaranteed, because junk food has a lot of processed uh, products that get quite a bit of pesticides in them when they're um, being grown. And uh, so you can see more of that in those foods, which are not very good anyways. Um, brain health is going to correlate with your diet. I mean, there's quite a bit of information about diet and brain health. Uh, it's That's going to be about, you know, whether you're eating junk, whether you're eating um, good quality food. But part of good quality food is going to be related again to probably the soil health and uh, what other toxins are in there that you don't even know about. So certain foods do have certain um, higher levels of pesticide residues in them when they've been tested. Uh, some of that's been a little bit surprising, uh, like legumes, for example, was is one that's been kind of cited and I think cereals are probably another one. But, um, you know, it's, it, we look at fruits and vegetables, but we're not really looking at um, things like dairy and uh, our fats and stuff. And if you do a little research, fats are where toxins accumulate. So you probably want to consider trying to get organic fats um, and animal products if you're eating them. I would really recommend going organic as much as you can. We'll have more with Cheryl McComsey right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McComsey. Cheryl, have pesticides been shown to cause a number of health issues? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, 
we're, you know, we were kind of talking about mental health, but um, Parkinson's is probably one of the um, ones that is up there on the list because of, um, you know, in, in France, if you're exposed to a pesticide, they will actually compensate you um, because they feel that strong about the science around exposure to pesticides and Parkinson's. But, uh, you know, if we look back at, um, you know, Agent Orange, for example, is a herbicide, and, and it was used in Canada, too, and um, actually in, in uh, on some areas to uh, clean vegetation away. And we know that people who were exposed to that had all kinds of health issues, all kinds, and their children had problems, too. It, it carried on into the next generation. Um, everything from cancer to, you know, uh, mental problems to, uh, did I mention cancer? I think I did. <laughs> um, and so on. But uh, also the same kinds of pesticides are showing the same kinds of problems in farm workers and landscape workers and so on. So um, everything from cancer to neurological problems to birth defects, um, respiratory problems, kidney and liver disease. Um, it's quite a long list. And, you know, where it, it really becomes more apparent is when there's more exposure, especially to maybe a particular type of pesticide in an area. And uh, it's quite sad, actually, what happens to children, like, uh, some of these studies that were done uh, in Argentina and Hawaii, uh, the damage to children is is really, really sad. Um, I also talked to an activist in Bangladesh who was um, looking at certain pesticides on ca- using cashew farming that we recently banned in Canada that, that was causing all kinds of horrific um, birth defects in children. So people really suffer from their exposure to um, agrochemicals, and these are known ones. But and they're mostly acute exposures that we're talking about when we when we talk about these kinds of things. But the chronic effects are so hard to um, to show. But they're but they're beginning. There's the, the science around this is just growing and growing all the time. If you ingest or inhale more than one pesticide, is it possible the pesticides could interact interact with one another, making the exposure even worse? Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's almost funny in a way because um, a new genetically engineered corn uh, has just come out and it's designed to tolerate five herbicides. Well... The reason you're using five herbicides is because you want to kill something. And what you're using before isn't working so well anymore. So, obviously, that's going to be more harmful. Otherwise, it wouldn't kill these plants that have become resistant. Well, we know, we know all kinds of interactions. Um, you know, you're not even supposed to eat grapefruit when you're taking some kinds of um, medication. And, but, and we do know from some studies that uh, glyphosate and neonix have um, a more serious impact on deer, for example. And then there's some other herbicides like 2,4-D and other mixes, which um, they seem to accentuate the harm. So, yeah, um, the more you got there, the more you might not know what that um reaction is going to be, but, you know, some things are almost inert, and then when you mix them together, they become explosive. So <laughs> I can think of some kids in high school blowing the toilet off the wall kind of thing, throwing the uh, this little sodium pellets into the water. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, those are obvious ones, but um, absolutely interactions are going to have an impact, but we aren't really going to know what they are unless they're studied. And, you know, when um, Environmental Working Group says there could be up to 48 different pesticide residues on salary, well, who's doing a study on that? Um, that's the thing. We don't, we don't, 
do that, those studies, but they are starting to be done now after the fact, and it doesn't look very good. It's not looking good. Well, I guess people were too busy studying platypuses or plata tie or whatever the plural is to find out they glow under ultraviolet light. But maybe they should have been looking at pesticides. We'll have more with Cheryl McComsey right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McComsey. Cheryl, are you aware of people that develop mental illness and then stopped ingesting inhaling pesticides and what happened then? Um, well, I, I know of a number of people actually that, um, have harm. Um, I don't think they've actually come right out and said that they have a mental health issue exactly, but it could be more like a secondary thing. Um, and it's hard to, you know, you have to decide how you define, um, mental health, right? Like if you, if you're having insomnia and you're irritable and you, all of, a whole bunch of, uh, problems with your nervous system is that a mental health issue well really it is so some people have told me they they have become incapacitated and actually unable to work um, unfortunately with some of the pesticides that people have been exposed to the damage is permanent um, but I think it depends on what it is so like with glyphosate for example it is registered as an antimicrobial, and there's studies showing that it impacts gut flora at below acceptable limits of exposure. And we know that gut health impacts the brain. We know that glyphosate also holds on to minerals like magnesium, which is needed for good brain function. And there's studies on that. So um, if you remove that herbicide and your levels of magnesium go up and your gut health is improved, then yes, probably you can improve. I know um, lots of people say they feel better, but do they actually come out and say, I feel better emotionally or psychologically? I think it just makes us, for me personally and other people that I know, they are just more resilient in general. Um, and if you're sick all the time, it's stressful and depressive you know so it's really hard to know where the line comes where where does the does it cause actually cause a person to be depressed well it looks like it does it probably depends on how much you're exposed to and then if you have other things in your life you could be depressed um anyways but it would be interesting to do a study uh or studies and see what the diet is of people who are suffering from direct depression and to, if you put them on an organic diet, see if they improved, how much they improved if you just did that one thing. Um, people improve their health in all other kinds of ways, but I don't know. I haven't found, but I haven't really looked yet. I've been looking at different things for a study on that particular aspect. I suspect it does happen, but it's not studied. What would you eat to prevent or reduce mental illness? Um, well, I think that you want to make sure you're getting enough of certain um, foods that will enhance your um, ability to have a decent level of magnesium in the body. So some people do take... Um, I think liquid supplements are probably more absorbable into the body and, and, uh, so that's not really food related. But I think that if you're eating a really clean diet and, um, 
stay, stay away from too much processed foods because I even think organic processed foods are going to lack um, high nutrient value. You want to try to go as much fresh food as possible and um, and organic and local because local organic um, is going to be fresher and often comes from a smaller farm and so chances are it is probably going to be superior than maybe a big industrial farm is going to be. So your quality of your food is always going to be reflected, I think, in your health, not just in your mental health, but in your health in general, which is going to affect your mental health. Um, and I know I, I've, I've noticed lots of little things, I think, personally myself, um, that has been an improvement in my own personal health, and I hear it from other people as well. Do doctors look at pesticides as a possible cause of mental illness? I don't know if they look at it as a cause unless they know they've had a an acute exposure. Um, certain di- doctors, I think, have that are more invo- involved in environmental health um, because they are seeing people who've had um, a known acute exposure to something, and so on. But I would say in general, most doctors don't even really think of diet very often, let alone whether uh, you're eating organic or been exposed to a pesticide. I mean, if you go to emergency um, and you're having trouble breathing and you've been exposed to a pesticide, that, that comes to mind, but I don't think they think about your mental health afterwards. Uh, only in certain pesticides, the organophosphates in particular, because of their mode of action. Um, a doctor in emergency, I would hope they would be aware of that and mm. think of that uh, because it will impact your nervous system. That's what it does. That's how it kills insects. It's, it's really, that's how it works. So. Sure, as a kid, I remember those vapo strips hanging from the ceiling of the camper to kill bugs and then I thought well what about me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I mean some things some things don't move around the same way and some things do right like um, I mean I've seen results of people with the breakdown products of DDT in their body today who are not well um, and <laughs> so interesting, isn't it? Um, they don't know probably how they were exposed. So yeah, what about what about us? It's it uh, it's um, you know I I heard stories. I heard a story from a, a man here locally who, as a kid, was exposed to DDT, and a lot of uh, people that he knows um, have died. And he was sick, and he turned. He did turn his health around by um, changing his diet and how he lives. And so it, it took him a long time, he said. But you know, we didn't talk about depression. But uh, obviously, he's changed his health, and other people didn't even survive um, their exposures by the sound of it. Uh, you know, we we kind of. We kind of get an idea that, you know, Uncle Sam or Auntie Sue died of uh, tobacco exposure, but um, we might not actually say that. We, we, we might get a good idea that so-and-so was using a lot of pesticides and we're really suspicious that that was their cause of their cancer. The only time we really know something for sure is when somebody's hit by a Mack truck and we see it. But a lot of the time, we we really don't uh, figure out, you know, what's led to this person to have a heart attack, you know, um, or why this person has asthma. And certainly with depression, there's all kinds of, um, of life history that people have and other things that have happened to them. But is that really it? Is is would they be more resilient and able to handle those stresses better if their diet was clean? That would be uh, 
an interesting thing to look at because it does seem that some people are more resilient. And we don't really know exactly, I don't think we always really know exactly why that is. Oh, it's like the people who smoke and die at like at 103. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, how do they get, get through all that? Yeah. They might have been healthier all those years too, but yeah, they live a long life and you go, well, how do they manage that? <laughs> Naturally immune. Uh, also, when you said a lot of doctors aren't aware of nutrition, I had a, a horrible uh, set of uh, hives and a rash this spring. And the doctor asked me, did you eat strawberries? I said, yeah, uh, two days ago. She said, yeah, there's a bunch of pesticide in the local well, in the strawberries being sold in the supermarket, so don't eat them. And I, then I remembered you telling me about the dirty dozen, the foods uh-huh. most likely to have pesticide residue. Yeah, I really think allergies has a lot to do with pesticides um, because people have these reactions that resemble allergic reactions and they get this pesticide on this food and now they can't eat it after that at all because their body's sensitized to that food that their body's going like, no, I don't want that. Um, you know, I really think there's a, a very high likelihood of that. And I even heard a a grade four kid tell me he's allergic to grass because it was sprayed. (laughs) A kid in grade four telling me that. So yeah, some some doctors are really good at at being aware. Um, And uh, certainly the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment do um, talk about using cosmetic pesticides and that we don't need them. And I'm pretty sure some of those doctors are pretty aware of all the other things that and places that pesticides are used um, who've been lobbying for that. And I do know other doctors who you know, work in environmental health. But in general, um, my experience has been in the past anyways that people weren't thinking of it. Um, they just weren't. And I think that's going to change because we're using more than we were before, and we're actually not using safer pesticides. We've got we've been given the impression that the pesticides we're using are safer, but if a scientist is saying neonics can be five to ten thousand times more toxic than DDT, well, that doesn't sound like that to me. That sounds like we're going the wrong direction. We need to look at doing things differently. And, you know, agroecology is studying how things work and not fighting that system. Um, if we only use pesticides when we absolutely couldn't find an alternative, like maybe in the, in the case of, uh, Japanese knotweed or something, well, the world would be a different place. I think people would be healthier. Cheryl, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Jim. Cheryl, are there some websites you can recommend for people who are concerned about the issues we talked about today? Well, I think, you know, if you Google mental health and environmental issues, if, if mental health is your is your concern, certainly I found a big... Um, handout on that in particular from um, the Collaborative on Health and the Environment. And they have uh, something from November 2008, and it talks about all different kinds of toxics um, that we're exposed to. And they list metals as well as pesticides are some of the um, things that they will cause um, symptoms of psychiatric conditions. And then So I think that would be useful for people if they're concerned about that in particular. And then the Environmental Working Group, um, they're kind of a U.S. group. I think they kind of give some good guidelines for maybe staying away from certain foods that are likely going to have more pesticide residues on them. I think they kind of miss uh, some of the concerns. Then there's also Green Beaver, um, their company, Canadian company that uh, started with a couple who was concerned about um, these kinds of things, and they have a publication that lists toxins and 
what they believe they're re- like, you know, the science around what they're related to. So you can kind of get an idea of what you might want to avoid in your personal care products and um, cosmetics and things. Because it's not just food, it's, you know, your lotions and stuff and your shampoos and uh, everything. So, I mean, you, you will notice, I believe a lot of people will notice a significant change in their hair and their skin and their gut and how they sleep and so on if they are uh, eliminating that. So there's there's some ideas there. Um just Googling things like this, often you will find some reputable sources if they're, you know, medically orientated. Um, some of the organic farming pages have some good information about stuff as well, I think. Cheryl, thanks again. Thank you. My guest has been Cheryl McKenzie, founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. She was speaking to us from Powell River, British Columbia. If you have any questions for Cheryl or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.